Built, not bought. This RC Corvette is fully 3D printed from top to bottom, but was it worth all the effort? And should you attempt a similar build? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome. Another C3 Corvette build is underway, a 77 Greenwood Sebring GT to be exact. For those who saw one of my prior builds featuring a 1968 Corvette body from AMT, this build will be very similar and utilizes the exact same RC chassis design. This body here, however, is a little different, being fully 3D printed on an SLA printer rather than sourced from a plastic model kit. When looking at the body though, it's not immediately apparent this was 3D printed as it really came out looking nice, but not without its flaws. This is actually my first time doing a 124 scale build with a fully 3D printed body. I came pretty close in a recent video featuring my scale shop project, but that was only about one third of a Chevy Nova. I chose to cut the car digitally and only print the parts that I needed to make it look like it was smashing through the wall. No point in trashing a perfectly good model kit if I can print exactly what I need, right? If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave the link to that video below in the description. This Corvette body is all here though, and it's going to look great once painted. 3D printing has been a big part of this channel and an extremely useful tool for many projects. When it comes to sourcing high quality 124th or 125th scale bodies though, with few exceptions, I actually much prefer getting a plastic model kit. For anywhere between maybe 15 to 50 bucks, either new or used, I can get a high quality plastic model kit with great looking body and it will have smooth surfaces, fine details, decals, rubber-like tires, and clear windows. Sure, a little sanding and trimming will be required to achieve the best appearance, but styrene is a very easy material to work with, hence why it's the standard. Resin 3D printers can achieve a high level of detail, but they can be a bit messy, require cleaning and curing, and some of the higher quality resins are not cheap. Also, creating the clear pieces like the windows can be a bit of a process. Not necessarily a huge amount of labor, but overall a bit more of a process than just opening a box and getting started. And when it comes to FDM 3D printers, I've messed around with printing some 24 scale bodies in the past, and you can get okay results. Personally, these days though, it seems I have less and less free time, and so it's just hard to justify spending hours 3D modeling, sanding, and priming just to wind up with something inferior to what can be found in a plastic model kit. To each their own though, and with all that said, 3D printing smaller scale bodies or complete model kits definitely have their place, and can certainly have their advantages. Just to name a few, you can find some really niche vehicles available for download and printing. No expensive tooling costs when creating a digital model, so you can get all kinds of variations and more unique vehicles. I'm not going to hold my breath waiting for Ravel to release a 73 Olds Cutlass sedan, but with just a few clicks, I could be 3D printing my own. Also, as long as your 3D printer is capable, you can 3D print the body in any scale that you'd like. You can also make modifications to the body digitally before printing. Maybe you want to add a custom form-fitting body kit or a cowl induction hood. You can also 3D print as many bodies as you need anytime. There are a number of different websites that you can find 3D printable model kits. I'll provide a link to the page that I got this Corvette from below in the description. It's by the same designer that made the Chevy Nova from the scale shop video. I've been very pleased with these designs. You can download various different scales after purchasing the files. If you're following along with this project and want to use the exact same body as I have here, make sure you print the 125th scale version of this body. It will fit the chassis that I'm using perfectly with no modifications to the CAD files being required. That said, I did go ahead and combine a few parts that would normally be separate, such as the grill and the T-tops digitally before printing. I figured it would be easier to print this body all in one piece and not have to worry about gluing those parts in place. After being printed, the body looked good, but it did need some work and primer to help smooth things out. To create the windows, you have a few different options. You can either 3D print the windows using a clear resin. Some sanding, polishing, or applying a clear coat will likely be required to make them crystal clear, or at least close to it. You could also vacuum form some windows using the 3D printed window pieces as a buck. Or you can simply trace and cut out some clear pieces of plastic, and that's exactly what I did for this project. If you're choosing this method, it's best to choose a body with as flat of a windshield and windows as possible. That's not so much the case on this C3 Corvette, unfortunately. The side windows and rear window are fine, but the windshield isn't going to look perfect. 
As you can see though, I've got all of the parts for this 3D printed body sanded, primed, and ready for paint. This Greenwood Sebring GT Corvette body is an example of a car that you can't get a model kit for, at least not as far as I'm aware of. I chose this wheel design to pair with the body, which I've linked on our Patreon page if you're interested in 3D printing the same wheels for your project. Like the body, I recommend printing them on a high detail resin printer for the best appearance. As I said before, I'm using the same FPUC1 chassis design that I used prior for that 68 Corvette build. The chassis will fit this Corvette body just as well as you'll soon see, with just a small amount of work being required. You'll again find the STL files to not only this specific chassis, but other 124th and 125th scale designs on our Patreon page. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can order this chassis as a kit, which includes just about everything you'll need minus the body from our website linked below in the description. For more information and a full build of this chassis, I recommend you check out that prior 68 Corvette build. The only difference with this chassis here is I'm using a compact all-in-one ESC and receiver combo. It's a very simple, compact, and inexpensive unit that we plan to offer as an option for this chassis kit, eliminating the need for you to provide your own radio for the car, just supply your own batteries and body, and that's it. After splashing some flat black paint on the bottom of the chassis, just to make it look a little better when viewing the bottom of the car, I finished the assembly of this chassis, which is very simple, as I've showcased in detail in a prior video. For the best appearance, I positioned each wheel so that they're right at the edge of each fender. This will result in some material needing to be removed from around the front wheel arches so the front wheels have room to steer left and right. You'll see that process very soon. Right now though, I wanted to secure the body to the chassis using magnets just like I did on that 68 Corvette. Of course, it's important to make sure that the body is aligned correctly when you are gluing the magnets in place, and I did a little bit of shimming to make sure that the body is level and is sitting at the correct ride height. I'm really liking the stance of this car, but as I said, I needed to remove some material from around the front wheel arches so they'll have room to steer. A very easy process, you just have to be careful not to detract too much from the appearance by removing too much material or accidentally cracking or damaging the body in some way. But after a few cuts, the wheels can now steer without any worries of them rubbing against the body. To save a bit of room, I chose to solder the wires from the ESC receiver combo directly to the motor rather than using a connector. This of course would make swapping the motor slightly less convenient, but not a big deal. I'd rather save the space since it's at such a premium on these C3 Corvette bodies. And as you can see, the car works just fine, so I can move on to painting the body. I decided to paint the car black and I also painted the windows that I had traced and cut onto some clear plastic previously. I painted those from the back so that they will look smooth on the side facing towards the outside of the car. There's no room for an interior, so I want the windows completely blacked out so you can't see in. Once the paint dried, there was quite a bit of orange peel present, so I decided to do some sanding and resprayed a few more coats, along with applying a clear coat to hopefully protect the paint from scratches. The paint was looking much better at this stage, but still needed some work. I did some color sanding and a lot of polishing. I ended up getting a pretty good looking result in the end, however I think part of the imperfections that I was seeing has more to do with the actual body and imperfections present during the 3D printing process rather than the paint itself. Admittedly, I did burn through a few sections of the paint, but it's at least pretty smooth. I hand painted and used a sharpie to apply a few details. Nothing over the top, as this car is clearly not my magnum opus and it's really going to be more of a driver, so no point in really going over the top with it. One thing that did look really nice was putting a little silver paint and these lower portions on the hood. It might not look that noticeable in the video, but it is a nice touch. I did the best I could with the windows. Obviously trying to force a flat plastic piece into a curved windshield is not going to give the best looking results, but it is what it is, at least the electronics are hidden. Once the side view mirrors were in place, the car is now complete.
While it might not be quite on par with some of the conventional plastic model kits I've built, this is one mean looking Corvette. It's pretty cool not only having a car with this amount of 3D printed parts, but for it to look this good when complete. And of course, as we already know, this FPU C1 chassis is a lot of fun to drive, even if it lacks a lot of the brutal speed and precision handling of the much more expensive microscale RC cars. I'm always appreciative to have the opportunity to unbox a brand new ready to run RC vehicle, but at the same time, there's just something so cool about building one yourself with a fully 3D printed body and chassis. It certainly won't be the last 3D printed body I use for a project, though at the same time, I certainly appreciate the quality and simplicity of using a plastic model kit or a conventional RC body, so certainly I won't be quitting using those for future projects anytime soon. A very fun build that I hope you all enjoyed watching, and maybe you'll even give a similar project a try. If you're interested in doing a similar build yourself, check out some of the links and videos below in the description, and be sure to subscribe for more content coming soon. That's going to be all for today's video though. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.